Dreams are free. So wake up and enjoy the American dream. My name is Facundo Gonzalez, and yes, this is not a fake video. I did come to America as an immigrant with my whole family. I worked in McDonald's, CVS Pharmacy, moving company, fixing golf courses, name it. I did it all. And now I'm a second year emergency medicine resident. After a lot of hard work, pretty much 11 years, I managed to accomplish this goal. So I hope my story motivates you. This is my story and this is not those typical videos or three easy steps to become a doctor and a millionaire. No, I'm a very realistic human being, but very positive attitude towards life in general. So it was not easy for any means. It was very hard and difficult, the path I took and how I managed to accomplish this, but it's a path that pretty much I believe anyone can take. Doesn't matter if right now you're working at McDonald's, CVS Pharmacy, Starbucks, moving company, you're cooking in the kitchen, which I also did as well. If you want something and you're willing to put in the work and sacrifice certain things, you can do it. Pretty much it all started in December 2020 when I came to the United States. And I remember me and my family, the first word we learned was uh, no speak English. And that's all we knew how to say, uh, no speak English. And just like now you may encounter people or patients that say no English, no English. And that's just, it's hard because you are learning a new language. So pretty much after that, three years after that, coming into the United States, uh, my parents got separated and I pretty much moved with my little brother back and forth, which in between whichever parent had the most money to take care of us. So I moved back and forth between Miami and Massachusetts about three times. I went to two high schools, almost a third high school. And obviously that was not easy by any means, but I just knew I had to keep studying. Just for some reason, I always knew Education was the great equalizer. Like the quote says, Horace Mann, education is the great equalizer. And I truly believe that. Uh, then after that, after high school, I went to community college in Miami, two years. Then I transferred to Northeastern University in Boston. I did five years. And then after that, I worked as an EMT and bartender at the same time, eventually got into medical school. I did four years of medical school and then I got into residency for emergency medicine. Of course, in between all that 11 years, it was not easy at all. I actually worked 40 hours on top of school for as long as I can remember. It all started when I was 16 years old to help my mom pay the rent when she was working three jobs to pay the rent. So I used to get out of high school, go to work in McDonald's, and even my nickname, my nickname was like my chicken. And I didn't mind. I thought it was whatever. But clearly, you know, I missed parties. I missed hanging out with friends because I had to do school, go to work, finish at 10, 11 o'clock at night, take the bus, obviously, get home, study, go to bed, and repeat the same. And since then, I always just kept studying. After McDonald's for like a year and three months, I moved to CVS Pharmacy. So I was a photo lab technician there. Again, go to, was it high school? I think I was in college by that time. College, then go to work, to, all in bus. I, never, I had a car finally when my last year of college and obviously it's a used car, Honda Civic, like 1980 or something. So obviously after buying my first car, I was very excited. I felt very accomplished. And even while in college, after CVS Pharmacy, I went to work at a hotel and spa restaurant slash, you know, everything. So there I worked as a, you know, as a server, as a food runner, as a bus boy. I worked receiving an inventory for the hotel restocking the minibar. I worked as a pool boy. 
I worked on Sundays helping with the bingo on Sundays, setting up the audio equipment. Uh, I did a lot of jobs, all this on top of school. So again, not easy, but I knew I had to get an education. I knew I had to work because someone had to pay bills. Someone had to pay stuff. So then eventually, by the age of 18, I left my house to move to Massachusetts. That way I can pursue higher education and move away somehow from everything that was around me. I needed to move away mentally so I can focus and create a new branch in my family tree, a branch of success, something different. Because obviously I hated seeing my mom being 65 or 50 something, just working as a cashier in supermarket with swelling in the legs, edema, and with no retirement. So I knew that I needed to get a career, get an education, have a retirement. So those were the little things around me that I saw that you don't specifically have to go through them. But if you pay attention, look around, you'll see all these things that can teach you lessons and say, you know what? I don't want to be in that position. I, I, I don't want to do that. I want to get a job. I want to have a career. So that's just pretty much the inner motivation that I always had. Also, at the time, my dad was just also working multiple jobs, etc. So then I went to university for five years, took time in between to do some co-op internships. Unfortunately, one of the years I actually got forced withdrawn from school, pretty much was almost homeless. No joke, I somehow ran out of financial assistance. I ran out of loans I could qualify for because clearly there was no income from my part, much income. My mom didn't make enough income to be a co-signer. So at some point I was forced to withdraw from school. So at that time I literally was left with $20 in my pocket. I was sleeping at friends' houses. Uh, they were nice enough to pay part of my rent. And eventually I had to borrow money to buy a shirt and pants so I can start working at a restaurant as a boys boy. And then nine months later, I paid back school what I own and I continue studying. Again, I'm making it sound like it was something, but I can assure you it was very hard because I had come to Boston to chase the best education possible. Yet here I was thinking how I'm going to pay for my next meal. So this was very hard. But again, you have a goal in mind. You keep going for it. It's going to be hard. And like Sylvester Stallone says, I love his quotes. Uh, it's not about how hard you can hit, but it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. You know, how many times you fall, how many times you get up. That's what pretty much life is about in general. So after that, uh, I eventually obviously couldn't get into medical school right out of college. So then started doing EMT and then eventually went to Miami, worked as an EMT and a bartender at the same time, eventually got into medical school. And even after medical school, in between medical school and residency, there's a time period. But again, rent still needs to be paid. You still need food on the table. So I actually worked as an Uber and Lyft driver as a doctor. Zero shame. Again, it's a job. All jobs are honorable and I needed money. So that's pretty much in summary what it took with some of the obstacles in between. But I can assure you there's many more obstacles that I cannot even mention at this time. But point is, it doesn't matter what you're doing right now. All you need to do is go to school, go to a community college, get your basic sciences out of the way, take your pre-med courses that you need, continue to work and go to school. And even if that takes longer than the usual privileged child that had everything for him, a year, two, three year difference for a life in medicine means nothing at the end of the day. So if you have to take two years to do an MCAT, to get into medical school, take two years, but you want to do it well and do it once. So pretty much you work in Starbucks, go to nighttime classes. You go just get your classes done. Aside from getting your pre-med courses, you need your bachelor's, you take your MCAT, you apply to medical school, you go wherever you get in. 
You want to do physician assistant, same thing. You want to do DO school, same thing. Dental school, same thing. You just have to want to want it really bad and be willing to put the sacrifice of, hey, we're all going out to this party. We're all going out for drinks. You know what? Well, actually, I have class at 8 p.m. at night. So if you're willing to put in the work, you can do it. So I have said a lot. So I really hope you can get some motivation from this video. And in my next videos, you should expect shorter videos with motivational speeches or motivational you know, stories and a lot of quotations because obviously to get me through this hard period of time, I can assure you I watch every motivational video on YouTube and I could probably literally quote every single one. So if I do quote them, then, you know, I'm not copying them, just, just my brain, it's filled with them because you need them when you are yourself against this whole resistance around you that predisposes you to failure because we were not set out for success from the beginning. Some of us didn't come from privileged families, didn't have the right tools. I actually didn't even know college existed. I just, high school and then college, what is that? I actually did not know that college existed until my advisor told me. That's how far disadvantaged one can be. So I hope you, enjoy it it's hard to enjoy this type of video i guess you got motivation from this video and uh, thank you so much and share it if it helped you thank you